When it comes to IoT, it's not just about gathering events somewhere. It's also about being smart in, in terms of where to send that data from devices. IoT Hub has now new features on top of the existing routing uh, feature it already had that allows you to not only route on the content of messages, but also on the device twins. Um, I have Paul today on the IoT show to show us a bit how that works. And we'll also highlight the updates in the portal for Azure IoT Hub to make creating your routes for messages way easier. Thanks for watching the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. Today I have Paul Montgomery. How He's are you, Paul? Doing good, doing good. good. Glad to be here. Finally awesome. made it out. Finally, we, we, we're <laughs> looking for an excuse. The backstory is that we're looking for an excuse to have Paul on the show. Right. So we found a topic and a very nice demo. Right. right? Yeah. Cool. So um, before getting into it, we'd yes. like to introduce you to our audience, right? Right. I'm Paul Montgomery. I'm a senior software engineer with the Azure Portal team. Um, with that, we do the all the blades inside of Azure Portal, the CLI, PowerShell. So we touch pretty much every feature. So like you know, finally that, getting yeah. to be part of the show. Cool. Yeah, toolings that you developers are using to access our services, right? Right. Absolutely. And today in particular, the excuse we found to have you on the show yes. was a new feature that is lighting up in the uh, Azure IoT Hub blade, right. and that's a new way of routing messages from devices to yes. other services, right? Yes. So the routing and endpoints inside of the Azure IoT Hub is probably one of the most powerful parts of IoT Hub mm -hmm. because that's where you can start taking all of this data from all of these devices and actually shipping it out to the rest of the world. So with that, before you could always do system properties and app properties mm -hmm. and the message itself for routing, now we're going to extend that to where you can do the actual device twin as far as tags and properties. So properties yeah. desired, properties reported, and the tags themselves can now be queried as part of your route. Mm -hmm and you can route messages according to that. And just a reminder for people who are watching the device twin is that um, JSON or that let's let's technically yeah. speaking it's a JSON file that is maintained by IoT Hub, but yep. in a nutshell it's a digital representation of your devices right. in the cloud, right? Right. So frequently you'll have things like tags to describe where your devices are and that's kind of what we're going to show in the demo here in a okay. little bit. But also being able to set properties and retrieve properties from the devices mm -hmm. so that as the device is going through its various state changes, these properties will get updated. And to get those to represent an IoT hub, mm -hmm. we use the device twin. There you go. And in general, the way the way also I like to differentiate, because when people are asking, hey, why do we need device twin with properties when we have telemetry, right? And I right. like to say, hey, telemetry is going to arrive in big, huge bursts of data. Right. And, and while the twin is here to allow you to maintain a last known state right. of the device, you know, values for the properties that are set yeah. uh, from the cloud and properties that are reported from the device, which is a different approach to the device you know, data. Right. So it's actually more of the kind of real world what's happening um, than any kind of telemetry that came out because like the device can go to sleep mm -hmm. and you need to know well what was its last known good, okay. what was its last known state for this, that, and the other. Right. So illustration of that, actually you brought here a couple yeah. of uh, microcontrollers. A couple of ESP32s. Okay. So um, we can go ahead and the actual code for that with, you know, Wi-Fi hotspot names and all of that, which yeah. are all going to change after this anyway, <laughs> um, is really simplistic. It's using uh, one wire and the Dallas temperature uh, libraries, and of course the Azure IoT SDKs awesome. to go ahead and just really connect to Wi-Fi mm -hmm. and read the temperature and push out what is the current Celsius and Fahrenheit of the device. Right. That through the twins and leveraging the SKs, as you mentioned. Okay, yeah. so you're coding in VS Code. Uh, yep. You're going to deploy the code on these devices. Yeah. Uh, then you have like hot water and cold water right. here on the table. Yeah. Um, and uh, you have sensors. So we're going to see how that looks like. So let's like show us the flow of that demo, actually. I think you're going to. There's things that the code for the device has been developed, but the mm -hmm. things you're going to actually do live, right? 
I'm sorry. Like <laughs> it, it sings in the demo you're gonna actually just like do from yeah. scratch, right? Yeah, and it's it's really as soon as the devices boot up, you'll start seeing um, some console output from them. Okay. And you know, you'll see that it's going from about the seventy ish degrees here to mm -hmm. whatever we're putting it in. Okay. And I believe this one is what I've got kind of marked as a freezer. Mm -hmm. So it's the temperature okay. controller for a freezer. So we would really care about, okay, it's coming from a cold environment. Mm -hmm. What happens when it gets hot, right? Okay. So we'll get into that once we actually start seeing the data coming out. Okay. So if we hit for device and upload it to a device, we'll plug this guy in. And as it deploys, so here we're using um, the Arduino extension for yes. VS Code, right? Which yes. is so it's got a few things here. I've got the Arduino extension on, yeah. of course, to get all the Arduino goodness. Mm -hmm. um, also, IoT Workbench extension. Um, you'll see whenever I brought up the deploy to the device, that was IoT Workbench mm -hmm. device. And really, it's a pretty vanilla install of VS Code after that. Okay. So it has now updated, and if we open our serial monitor, we'll see it start connecting to Wi-Fi. We have an IP address. Yep. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can start see that we do have data coming through. Okay. Right now it's sending events, right? Yeah, so you'll okay. see that it's just blasting through every half second. Okay. And as we go ahead and say that this is the freezer, we'll just should it be in cold. There, and it should start coming down as far as... So 15, 15, 14, 13. So we're definitely okay. dropping our temperature. Makes sense. And as we then bring it up, you'll start seeing it start okay. to rebound back up. Okay. So with the sensor that. Sensor is working well. Sensor is working. So that's always a good thing. So if we go to our actual routing here, You'll see that message, er, you'll see that endpoints and routes has been removed and has been replaced with this message routing tab. Okay. And from here, you can actually do all of your creation of the route mm -hmm. completely in line. Meaning so you don't have a differentiation between what we had, which is which is like the custom endpoints versus the route itself, right? Right. Query, so right? you don't have to go to two places to do that. Okay. So okay. as long as you have your event hub or your service bus, your Azure storage in place, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and complete the whole process of setting up the route, setting up the query for the route, and setting which endpoint it goes to. Got it. And Makes creating sense. that endpoint for that other Azure resource. Okay. So for here, we will say hot freezer. Mm -hmm. The endpoint, as you see, I just have an events and this Azure storage doesn't really exist. So what we're going to do is add a new event hub. Okay. Add a new endpoint for an existing event hub. Okay. That's the name that's going to be um, you know, the one used in the IoT hub late, right? For mm -hmm. referencing that particular yeah. endpoint. So I've already got the Azure resource itself, and the event hub name is going to be Broken Freezer since it's okay. clearly hotter than a frozen amount. <laughs> so this will save the IoT hub. It will go ahead and now create that endpoint for the IoT hub okay. so that the route that we're going to create will actually start using that endpoint. Okay. So as you see, it came up here with hot endpoint. We're going to use device telemetry messages. And we'll actually be able to do more of the test here, where we have the device twin itself. OK. So this is a sample device twin that we could use. Mm -hmm. um, we have various messaging. OK. Again, the structure sample. of the data, the properties for the between the, mm -hmm. um, the messages, properties, and then the, the, the body of the message, right? right? So you basically can pick what you want to work on in terms of uh, routing the messages. Right. Okay. So for this, we would say we have a, um, 
message body mm -hmm. who has a Celsius that is greater than, say, well, I would say probably five. Sorry, okay. I switched to Fahrenheit for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 35 is going to be very warm for a freezer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's better. too late. <laughs> but we would also then, since we would possibly have other devices in our IoT hub, okay. we would then also use You basically kind of add a filter yeah. based on twin properties. So tags. Well, tags in that case. Um, would you want to use properties or you? No, one or the other. I mm -hmm. guess everything right. works, right? Yep. There you go. Awesome. So then we could come down here and be able to actually test our mm -hmm. message. And if this is yes, so that way it's like pushing and testing in production. You can actually just like input a, uh, a JSON, which is an example of what the, the data will come from the device, and and see that right. your query is actually working. Got it. So here we would be able to say, I care about freezers. Okay. Okay. We'll clear up the rest of this test message. Let me scroll so that I can actually see the rest of the test message. There's a comma. Which means I have missed a property here. There you go. So the message okay. matched the query. So let's avoid so the the any kind of you know shenanigans as far as okay. if this is something else, right? Okay. So what about if it was a heater? Hmm. Message did not match. Okay. I kind of validate manually your your, yeah. your routes, your query right now. Okay. So we'll save that. And this one, I'll save the route. Okay. And we should be able to then watch that, yes, we're still getting hot water. Okay. And we should be routing now to our hot endpoint. Okay. So data is going into an event hub right now. It is going into an event hub right mm -hmm. now. And to make sure that we actually have that endpoint up and running, I've created this uh, logic app. Okay. And if everything is set correctly with it, we should start having it talk to Teams. Okay. So you basically, so. Cap for each event hub that comes in, you added a, uh, a step in your Logic app that is about sending a message into Teams. Right. Okay. So we should be able to run that. Mm-hmm. And I have that Teams channel open here. And as you see, the message has arrived in Teams. Okay. So um, basically, the full loop of message arriving right. uh, from the device, certain value, the hub checks on the uh, on the twins value on, on the, the twins twin property value, or tag in that case, and the message body still we we're able to query both the device yeah. and the payload itself and bring that all together to make one set of queries to basically tell it exactly where to route this message to. That's cool. So, and actually, I noticed that, and we, we say that, but and, and it's important to notice that uh, we also simplified the experience of creating these routes because right. lots of users have been <laughs> actually using something like Streamalytics or functions behind yeah. IoT Hub to do the routing. Right. And now you can really have a rich experience in IoT Hub right. Blade for doing the routing, right? And that's just you know things that we keep trying to improve on is really get that user experience to make it really, really simple to make these really complex mm -hmm. little devices just be able to do what they need to do way easier for our users. That's awesome. So Paul, thanks a lot for coming to the show. You're uh, we'll find another excuse soon for you to have to play <laughs> with devices. Right. 
And we'll uh, look up something a little more than a temperature probe. Definitely, be definitely. Well, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and thanks for watching the IIT show. Hope to see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot.